Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, I wanted to do a bit of a discussion. I'm on Voxer again. So, um, for those of you who want to chat, um, you could either look up Matt Wall or Paperback Junkie is one word. Um, I should probably put that in the description. But anyhow, so I was on there talking to the book eclectic, and we were talking about um, science fiction. And I know the title of this video is kind of clickbaity. Um, and she didn't say it like this, but this is how I'm saying it. That, um, is science fiction dead? And there's going to be a ton of people without hearing anything I have to say right now going, that's freaking ridiculous. Blah, 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 and all this other stuff. But the reasoning behind that question is because um, we were talking about how um, back in my day, um, science fiction was the genre of ideas and exploring said ideas. And, um, it was almost like little, like, science fiction was kind of just allegories and fables about what could happen if the path we stay on, um, is like this, or what have you and whatnot. And, um, it seems like now, and I could be totally wrong, but from what I hear people mainly talk about, about science fiction now, because I don't read a lot of modern stuff, um, but what I hear people talk about is like, instead of it being about ideas, it's about, um, the idea of being in space. Um, there's, and a lot of the ideas that are floating around out there, like when you get into like time travel, um, it really focuses less on the science fiction elements and more on like historical fiction or, um, things of that nature. Um, and, like, military sci-fi is really big, and that just seems like, you know, kids who, like, grew up watching, like, Voltron or Transformers or something are adults now and writing their own Starship Troopers without any kind of, like, social relevance so anyway, um, there's that. And then I didn't know of all the sub-sub genres of science fiction. Like, like when you get into, like, time travel and military sci-fi and, um, uh, colonization sci-fi and, um, the derelict ship sci-fi and all the, like, all of these tropes that end up having kind of their own genre. But it seems like that the big ideas and um, the philosophical questions um, in sci-fi are gone. And, and there will be a caveat to that, so just bear with me a little bit here. Um, but you have like... Um, things being either very space opera 
Star Wars like, or you have um, very political Game of Thrones in space type thing, or you have um, like really hard sci fi, which is just like geeking out over like technology. Like, well, yeah, if you take the flux capacitor and yeah, but it's like based in like real like hard core science and um from what i've very little i've read of like hard sci-fi stuff um the story is very um flimsy or weak but the science in it is very hardcore and acute and the whole thing um and again, like, I don't read modern stuff. Um, I don't know why. I don't know if it's aesthetic because I like old paperbacks and um, new sci-fi stuff doesn't do that. I remember I read a trilogy um, that was new like three years ago. And it was basically, the first book was like a really cool detective story. And I can't remember the name of it. So I screwed that one up. But anyway. Um, what it seems like. Um, you know how, okay this has nothing to do with the topic. But you know how like you have everything shut. All the doors are shut. Like the screens are there or whatever. Everything's shut. But one fucking fly gets in, and you have no idea how it fucking got in. But it's in. And you just have to fucking deal with it, you know? Um, and they never make themselves known until you're doing something where you can't just get up and start swatting stuff. Okay. <clears throat> so anyway, um, I was watching a video... Um, on Logan Albright's channel the other day, and I won't say what video it is because um, the thing I'm about to say involves spoilers of some kind. So I won't say the name of the book, I won't say what video it was, but um, he was saying how, like, he was reading this book and the characters seemed kind of flat and very like one dimensional and then the big um twist was that these monsters in it were um just analogs of today's nazis and far right republican stuff and um he's like yeah, that's not a hot take, you know? Like, I'm so bored of this. And um, I'm not going to put words in his mouth. But he was just saying, like, he doesn't like being preached to when he's reading. And so I'm thinking, like, I'm like, okay, so Asimov. Like, did people find Asimov preachy um, when he would share ideas? Did people find Dune preachy um and then like I'm even trying to think if people found like C.S. Lewis preachy um I when I was a kid I read um and now we're talking fantasy here but like I read like um some of the Narnia books and um I don't think I knew enough about C.S. Lewis himself and what his beliefs were until I read the screw tape letters. I, I, I don't know exactly what I'm trying to get at here, but in new science fiction, is it that the 
big ideas have all been used up, and so people are left with, um, like, hot-button issues of today. Um, I threw out the idea that maybe we've all been disillusioned because a lot of the science fiction of, like, the 40s, 50s, and 60s, um, there were a lot of books that took place in the future that we've already lived through. Like, I mean, going from, like, 1984 to, um, you know... Um, I, there were a few books I read, I remember, that took place in the 90s. Um, I think, uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? I think that took place in the 90s or early 2000s. No, like, 20 teens, maybe. I don't know. Anyway. Um, but that vision of I'm going to simplify it for at least Southern California people who are my age when I was a kid and would go to Tomorrowland at Disneyland it was the 1950s version of what the future would look like and that 1950s version of the future was very um, hopeful, let's say. Um, and it leaves a warm feeling in my heart, you know, when I think of what that looked like and what, like... Even the covers for Astounding and um, Amazing Stories, for that matter. Like, things were bright and um, just a hopeful is the best thing I could come up with right now. And there were ideas that have already been implemented, like from the um, Star Trek communicator to flip phones, you know, um, and then the other thing is, like, I don't know if Vietnam, um, and the people coming out of Vietnam destroyed science fiction into, like, seeing, like, real life horrors on TV and stuff like that, if that led to hardcore, like, dystopian fiction being written. Because I could see, um, like, post-apocalyptic and or dystopian futures being, um, kind of the fear of what the future would be like. So, is it the fact that there were so many, um, dystopian and post-apocalyptic science fiction stories coming out in the 80s that we have just decided to live with the fact that the future is not bright. <clears throat> it doesn't matter what new ideas come because we're all doomed. Um, <clears throat> I'm just this spitballing this right now. And I think this is the closest thing to an answer that, um, I could come up with right now is that if everyone is already under the assumption that we've lost and, um, for a sports analogy here, it's kind of like, a football game where in the first quarter it's 42 to nothing and you're on the losing team and you still have three quarters to go and you know you're not going to catch up so what's the point like is that what the science fiction writers of today are is that their mindset that um 
there's no point in coming up with new ideas. God, this got dark really quick. And again, I don't read a lot of new science fiction, but um, the people on BookTube who I know who do read new science fiction, none of them are saying anything about the ideas people are having. Um, and like, if this idea, I don't know, maybe I'm hanging on that too much, but, um, that's what we were talking about. So I wanted to tag people to do videos on this who I think are knowledgeable, um, in the subject. And if I don't tag you and you do have a take on this, please do a video on this because I really, I really, really think that this is an important conversation to have because now there's two flies. So I think there is a, a breach somewhere on the ship. Um, it's an important conversation to have because so much of the technology that we have today, we have today because it was talked about in science fiction books so long ago. And um, it inspired those people to come up with ways to make those things work. So that's one thing. And the second thing, um, in all of these like utopian societies that people talked about in um, science fiction books, there, there, there were like books with class systems and stuff, but like just the whole idea of equality um, was a thing in these books. And um, I think when you read about and society reads about things that are accepted in the future and almost becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that people just go, well, you know, like everything's going to be, people are going to be equal, you know, like in, you know, another 20 years. So we might as well start burying the hatchet now. And that's what scares me about post-apocalyptic and dystopian fiction being so prevalent is that I do not want a self-fulfilling prophecy of doom. Um, so anyway, that that's my beef. So here's who I'm tagging. Um, Mark Richardson, obviously. Um, I would like to hear your take on this. I would like to hear Steve Donahue's take on this, but there's a part of me that is afraid of it. <laughs> so Steve, if you're watching, um, don't... Don't make me cry, okay? Um, but uh, obviously the book collective, because that's how this conversation even started. Um, Scott Danielson, um, he I just watched a video of his where um, he talked about a couple um, modern science fiction books that he really liked. Um, so I'm hoping that... Um, there is some light at the end of the tunnel, um, on that. Um, and Logan Albright, I mean, I already talked about you on this, so if you, um, have a take on this, please, I, I would love to hear it. Um, and the bookish Bryants. Um, I know Scott, um, reads a bit of the good old sci-fi. So, um, and, and honestly, anybody else, um, um, if you want to take a stab at this, let us know what you think. Um, but yeah, so um, I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.